Windows 11. Why does my desktop need to report back to Redmond? You can modify, you can fork it, you can share it. Have you ever wondered what Linux does better than Windows? Well, here are 10 things that Linux does better than Windows. I kind of think back to when computers actually kind of made sense. Okay, you know I'm lying, right? Computers never made sense to anyone. I don't think that's a thing, right? But there was a time when you didn't need three logins and a cloud account just to open Notepad. And every year I just get reminded why Linux, this weird, geeky underdog, still does things way better than Windows. It just completely blows me away. So let's count them down. Number 10. I have the community and the philosophy. Linux belongs to everyone and no one. That's what makes it so great. You can read the code, you can modify, you can fork it, you can share it. It's a community driven project. It's digital commons that's lasted for decades. Windows belongs to that evil corporation, Microsoft. Number nine, stability and longevity. You can run a Linux system for years without rebooting, decades even, if you're on the right hardware. Windows will reboot itself in the middle of the night because it decided it really needed to update one drive. Number eight, security and privacy. Linux gives you control over your own machine, clear permissions, sane defaults, and no hidden telemetry nonsense. Windows 11 literally requires a Microsoft account. No more offline installations. I mean, I got to connect to their cloud first. Like, I got a question, why does my desktop need to report back to Redmond just to change my wallpaper? I mean, why would they be interested in that? what my configurations are, or preferences, or whatever. Or is this something else they want? I mean, how much of your metadata do they actually sell to third-party vendors? And to be fair, Microsoft isn't the only one doing this, but this is an operating system. Number seven, the developer's playground. If you're coding anything serious, Odds are you're already using Linux. Yeah, it's like the backbone of servers, Docker containers, and just about every programming language worth knowing. Windows needs WSL just to pretend, and that's the punchline. Even Windows uses Linux. Number six, command line power. Linux shells are real tools. You've got grab, ox, set, find, SSH, and it's like a, a Swiss army knife that never runs out of blades. You can chain them together, automate entire workflows, and feel like a wizard while doing it. PowerShell, yeah, it's powerful, even fairly impressive, but it feels like a corporate shell wrote the rules and the commands. Number five, file system superiority. Yeah, this is a thing, folks. ButterFS, ZFS, Extension 4. These file systems have snapshots, checksums, and actual data integrity. In TFS, that, that thing's a fossil from like the XP era. It's still pretending it's modern because Microsoft painted a new GUI on top. And don't even try fixing Windows in safe mode. You'll be lucky if it even boots. Number 4. Resource efficiency. Linux doesn't need 16 gigs of RAM just to open a file manager. You could run on a toaster if you really wanted to. Meanwhile, Windows is idling with a thousand background processes trying to figure out which telemetry service gets to spy on you first. No, thank you. <laughs> Number three, modularity. Linux is like a Lego set. Don't like GNOME? Use KDE. Don't like KDE? Use i3 or DWM or XFCE or something 
you compiled in your basement at 3 a.m. Don't like system D? Yeah, good luck, but you can rip it out too. And Windows? Well, you're just stuck with explore.exe probably till Jesus comes back. Number two, real package management. You don't need to go hunting for exes and web installers you just type sudo apt install or sudo dnf install and bam it's done you know depending on what you know distro you're using obviously there's no pop-ups there's no toolbars there's no 200 megabyte installer for a calculator app wait we have flat pack don't we yeah well whatever we won't mention that <laughs> Windows, that old dinosaur still thinks every program needs its own little installer party. Like, there have been other third-party package managers that developers have made for Windows applications, but I dare say I prefer the Linux way way better. That is, unless you were talking about snap packs. You could just go ahead and give that to Microsoft if you'd like. Feel free, I, I don't mind. And this list would not be complete without honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one, backwards compatibility that actually works. You know Linux can actually run software from like 20 years ago, right? Like without any modifications, you can still recompile some dusty C code from like 2002 and it'll still build and run like it was written yesterday. Old shell scripts, terminal apps, and even, I don't know, X11 programs from early 2000s, they still work today. Meanwhile, on Windows. Yeah. Try running something from the XP era and watch it implode. You'll be stuck digging for DLLs and compatibility modes and half broken installers. Microsoft loves to brag about backwards compatibility but linux quietly lives it i just have to say honorable mention number two freedom from bloat and ads linux doesn't shove ads into your start menu it doesn't recommend new microsoft edge experiences who would ever use that browser by the way <laughs> never thought that was a good idea yeah it doesn't pop up with little boxes saying, hey, have you tried OneDrive today? And Windows 11 literally puts sponsored apps and suggestions inside of your system menus. They literally turn the desktop, the one place that, you, that used to be yours, into a freaking billboard. Linux, quiet, clean, yours. If you see something running, it's because you put it there. That is, unless you use Ubuntu, remember that default Amazon app, anyone? There was that Manjaro thing. Uh, I won't even mention that. Number one. And guess what it is? Yes, transparency and control. Yeah, you, you get to see what's underneath the hood. Like, it doesn't hide anything from you. It doesn't hide your processes. It's just a simple text file. Your logs, a text file. Your network stack, edible in plain text. And on Windows, half of it's buried inside of the registry. That cursed digital junk drawer nobody understands. Linux just says here. It's all right here. Don't screw it up. And that's what Steve Ballmer never understood back in the day when he was so obsessed with destroying GNU slash Linux and calling it communism. He was kind of a pud whacker, wasn't he? Did he really cut short his vacation with his family in order to plead with the city of Munich not to migrate? 14,000 PCs from Windows to Linux. I guess that's what happens when your ecosystem is ran by corporate brown nosers. How did that turn out? So what do you think of my list? Did I miss anything? Click here to watch why Linux won't see 10% of the market share. 
I would like to quickly think these sponsors, that these people, this show would not be possible. If you would like to consider donating, you can buy me a cup of coffee or become a member or give me a super chat on one of my live streams. Thanks for watching. God bless everyone. Ciao.